Okay, 7.6 inverses of square matrices. Only square matrices have an inverse. And one of the properties is if I wanted to solve something, let's make it look a little easier. Let's say I wanted to solve 5x equals 10. You guys know you would divide both sides by 5 and you'd get the answer. But in matrices, we don't divide. So instead, we multiply by the inverse. What's the inverse of 1? Or what's the inverse of 5? It's 1 over 5. If I multiply both sides by 1 over 5, this becomes 1. And then that side becomes 2. And now we know x equals 2. That's what this is saying over on the side. If you do the inverse on both sides, on the left side, you'll just have x alone. And then whatever that is will be what's the answer on the right-hand side. So for matrices, you need to take the inverse matrix and multiply both sides by the inverse of A. A to the negative 1 is read as A inverse. If a matrix has an inverse, it's called invertible. Otherwise, it's called singular. I'm also fine with it does not exist. A special property, this 1, if we're talking about matrices, that 1 is the identity matrix. Again, only for square matrices. They like to use I with a little subscript of 2. I2 would be 1, 0, 0, 1. I3, running out of space, but it would be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So hopefully you see that the identity matrix has 1s down that main diagonal, and everything else is 0. So in little gray box, it says... If you are multiplying A times A inverse, you should get the identity matrix. Same thing if you're doing it in the other order. So notice there's two sides to this equation. Remember proving inverses from integrated 3? You do A times A inverse, and you also do A inverse times A. Because order matters when we multiply matrices, so we have to show that you get the same answer, the identity matrix, both ways. So for number 1, when they say show that A and B is the inverse of A, however you want to say it, you need to take A and multiply it by B. Oops. If it is the inverse, you should get that identity matrix. And then later, wherever you have space, you need to do B first and multiply it times A. So this is good practice of multiplying matrices that we just learned last class. Why don't you try to do the top one? Okay, I showed my work as best I could. When you multiply A times B in that order, you do get the identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1. Go ahead and do the bottom one. As a heads up, you will get 1, 0, 0, 1, or you didn't do it right. So practice your matrix multiplication. Since we got the identity matrix both times, if you took your time and did it the second time, you can say A and B are inverses. Okay. So you can see having the inverse of a matrix is super important because it helps you undo matrices. So to find the inverse, you can take your matrix and draw that dotted line and put the identity matrix on the right-hand side of it. Then you do row ups until you get the identity on the left-hand side and then your answers are on the right-hand side. You could do that for any square matrices. So we have a 2 by 2 there for you and a 3 by 3 there for you. Once you get the identity matrix on the left, this side is the inverse. The nice part is we only make you do two by two and two by twos have a nice little formula. But in theory, you know how to do it for anything. You could do a five by five matrix and find the inverse if possible. Not all matrices have an inverse, by the way. So you could try using your row ops if you'd like or if it's a two by two, which is all we're going to test you on, you can use the formula in the corner. So I want to highlight this. Obviously, they're all 
letters to begin with, but... Okay, so to find the inverse, you take your matrix, the main diagonal, which is the A, D, you just swap those. So on the main diagonal, you swap them. Then on the other diagonal, you put a negative sign in front of it. So keep them where they are, but put a negative in front of it. It's hard to tell what color that was, sorry. And then in front, you have to do that frac or the yeah, fraction multiplied by the scalar in front. The bottom number is this multiplied, and then always minus this multiplied. So if you love a formula, there it is. Let's use that in the next example. So I have find the inverse of a. So the inverse is going to be 1 over diagonal multiplied, always minus diagonal multiplied, times switch the main diagonal. I'm going to erase this so I can see my numbers. I swapped the main diagonal and then make the other diagonal opposite. Negative 1 becomes 1, positive 4 becomes negative 4. Now we need to neaten this up. This is really 1 over 1, right? Negative 3 plus 4. Oops, not equals. I would be multiplying that by this. Since it's just 1, my inverse matrix is this. If it was anything other than 1, I would just distribute it, right? Multiplying by a scalar, you just multiply every number in there by that number. And this would be my inverse matrix. Um, if you'd like to see how we do it in row ops, I'll see if I can squeeze that in over here on the side. You take your original matrix. This would be the only option if it was three by three. You put it next to the identity matrix and then you do row ops to swap them. So I already have one there. So I want to work on making this become zero. So this is good practice of your row ops. Hopefully you realize to make that happen, you could just add them together. So I'm not going to switch colors every time. Here we go. You're going to have the top row the same. I'm going to add them together all the way across. 1 plus negative 1, 4 plus negative 3, 1 plus 0, 1 plus 0. So it, row ops happen all the way across the entire thing. Okay, the only thing I need now is that top one to become zero. I got lucky on that. I got, this was already here. That happened and that happened. So now I just need this one to zero out. See if you can do your row ops to make that zero out. Row one. Minus four row two should make that happen. Carefully do that. Row one minus four row two, that becomes zero. That's what I wanted. Row one minus four row two. Row one minus four row two. And look, this side is the inverse matrix we found earlier. So now you have two methods for two by two. But the only method that works for anything bigger than that is the row operation that we just did. Okay, so good news is anything bigger than a 2 by 2 we usually have you use a calculator for. So we talked about how to type things into our calculator last class or the other video, whatever you're doing. So you need to be able to get matrix A to be this. So go into second matrix, type it in. Make sure it looks the same. Then once you get your matrix typed in, you want to quit out of that. You want to be on the main screen. Once you type in a matrix, you almost always quit out of that screen. Then you're going to do second matrix. From the name screen, you're just going to press enter on A. So that's going to bring it to your home screen. 
So right now your home screen should look like this, A. Then you're gonna press X to the negative one button. There's a button, it's right above the log button. Sorry, two above the log button, it's right next to the sign button. So you press that and it'll give you the little exponent of negative one. And then you press enter and it'll give you your inverse matrix. So if you did all of this right, A inverse should equal negative two, negative three, one, negative three, negative three, one, negative two, negative four, one. So if you typed it all in carefully, your calculator will give you the inverse. Okay, so like I said, anything bigger than a two by two, we usually let you use a calculator on. Plus you could always use a calculator to check your answer. So we learned last time how to do reduced row echelon form. So if you typed this in as a matrix, this would be one, one, I'm not gonna draw the line, but seven, one, two, 11. And if you did reduce row echelon form of that matrix, it will give you the answer. Well, it gives you one, zero, zero, one with the answers over here you need to know that that means that the answer is four comma three, x comma y. You can also get the answer out of your calculator by typing them in separately like it shows up above. So you can take just the coefficients, make a matrix out of that, put that in matrix A. You can get just the solution side of the equal to side of your equation make a matrix out of that and put that in matrix B. Then you can do A time, nope, A inverse times B on your home screen using your matrices and it'll give you the solutions again. So let's practice doing it that way. Technically you don't know how to need to know how to do both. But it's always helpful knowing how to do something a different way. So I would type in matrix A, you have to go second matrix edit. Matrix A would be one, 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 two. Matrix B, second matrix, and then go down to B and then edit would be seven, 11. Clear out of all of that, go to your home screen and do A inverse times B and it should give you the matrix for three as your answer because it's the same answer, right? So another way using the idea of inverses to help us find the solution. This is why having knowing the inverse of a matrix helps us find the solution. So number five, three by three, we would definitely let you use your calculator on. Choose the method you prefer. Personally, I think it's easier to type it in once. So matrix A, I'm gonna type in all of this. very carefully. Then on my home screen, I'm going to do reduce row echelon form of matrix A, and it should give me the identity and whatever my solution is over here. See if you can get the solution to number five using a calculator. When I typed it all in and did reduce row echelon form, I got three, negative two, one on my screen but I would always answer as a point on my test. Okay, hope you're having a good day.